in the last stream, we were working, of course, on all of these multi-block machines here from immersive engineering. We set up the squeezer, the fermenter, the refinery, and the diesel generator, which all culminate in us now producing 4,096, or almost producing 4,096 redstone flux per tick. The only thing stopping us right now from producing 4,096 redstone flux per tick is the fact that we're currently not making uh, the resources required to get the ethanol and the plant oil out of the squeezer and the fermenter. And so the very first thing that we need to do in today's stream chat is we need to look at making at least one, potentially multiple garden cloches. These are not too difficult to make. They're made with uh, glass, treated wooden planks, a vacuum tube, and a iron mechanical component. I think we have multiple spare mechanical components from yesterday's stream where I accidentally made too many. And the vacuum tube really doesn't seem too difficult to make. I'm fairly certain that uh, this blueprint here is the same one we use to make other components like the uh, the steel plates and whatnot or the uh, mechanical components uh, that we've made previously. So I don't think that's gonna be too difficult. And honestly, none of this really looks too bad. I do believe we have some spare copper wire from yesterday's stream, we do indeed. We of course still have a good amount of redstone because our orchid has still been chugging away um, over here. Real quick, side tangent, uh, people have asked me in the YouTube comments why I don't use stone for this, like why I don't uh, just take the cobblestone that we're generating uh, automatically over here, smelt it into regular stone, and then put that down uh, in front of the orchid instead. And the reason for that is that it doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, there are three kinds of orchid in the pack. The regular orchid from Britannia uh, does have the ability to turn regular stone uh, into ores. However, um, we currently have three orchids in the pack, those being the orchid endium, the orchid ignum, and then there is a third orchid, aka the regular orchid, that we don't unlock until we get to the overworld, until we get to like the next uh, level of, uh, of advancements. And so, um, unfortunately, this orchid here can only turn endstone into ores. It can't turn anything else into ores. Uh, if we wanted to turn normal stone into ores, we'd have to get the regular orchid, for which we have to get to the overworld first. So that's why we've not been doing that. Um, and then along the same lines, if we wanted to use the Orchid Ignum, um, with that, we can only use Netherrack. You can't use Endstone um, or regular stone on that. And uh, so it's basically just a way of getting specific resources until we get to certain points um, in the pack. But uh, either way, back over into here. So I'll make a few... Actually, I think we only need one, right? Because you make a few of these. Yeah, I'll only make the one nickel plate because we are a little low on nickel. And as I've mentioned in the past, we're not really actively making nickel anywhere. I think it's just being uh, provided as a byproduct through our, uh, our processing of iron. Now, I'm not quite sure, chat, how many garden cloches I'm going to need here. We might have to do a little bit of, uh, of testing because for one, I don't know if we're going to need like multiple garden cloches just for our hemp seeds. And on top of that, I'm not quite sure yet whether or not I want to go with garden cloches for our sugar cane. There are faster ways, I think, of generating sugarcane. For example, we can do it with the redstone, uh, you know, signal on the snap that we've been doing up until now, and you can get it quite fast. But what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking I kind of want to have maybe two garden cloches, and I think I want to put them, or maybe four garden cloches. I'm just thinking about where I'm going to put the garden cloches uh, in a way that's going to look decent. And right now, I'm thinking if we have one of each, they might go just in the middle here. If we have two of each, then I might put them kind of like here and here on either side, right? And so I, I, I'm I, kind of tempted, even if it's a little less efficient, to maybe make both resources using garden cloches, even if we could potentially get sugarcane um, in, a, in a faster manner. But um, either way, let's go ahead and make a few of these, shall we? We should be able to make three right out of the gate, and we can make more if we want, I think, fairly, fairly easily. Good stuff. Uh, these are quite a few blocks tall, and they do require a couple of uh, things in order to actually work. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. Of course, we would uh, replace the end stone uh, back there to make it look a little bit uh, a little bit nicer. But uh, essentially, for these to actually work, they require both water and power. Now, power we can send fairly easily, um, but we could do it in a couple of ways. We could run the uh, energy conduits over to the top. We could put down an energy cell and then use wireless power. There's a bunch of options. I think we'll most likely just end up running uh, energy conduits through the floor, uh, up and into the, uh, the top there. The slightly harder part for us right now is going to be providing these with unlimited water because as you'll know if you've watched any of the previous streams up until now uh, we've been doing all of our water gathering using the old rod of the seas here however uh, people both in the youtube comments and on twitch have recommended uh, that i use the endivoir this guy right here from uh, endrio it's an infinite reservoir 
for water. And it's really not too difficult to make. It's one cauldron and eight fused quartz. Fused quartz, of course, as we uh, saw in the last episode, is made in the alloy smelter with nether quartz. And thankfully now to this, uh, now that we have the double layer capacitor here, it is a little bit faster as well. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the way this works is that you can put down at least three of them and then kind of use it like an infinite water source where the center end of wire will keep getting filled up by the adjacent end of wires so long as the adjacent ones have water in them. I believe that's how that works. So we're probably going to hide this like under the floor here and then pump the water into the bottom of, uh, of both of the garden cloches. Let's see. So if we grab you and we do one of these, what we should then be able to do is down here, we're going to temporarily break some uh, some wood. And I think we're also going to go maybe one block slightly further down, like here. And I think if we put three of these down, what we can then do is we can then put water in here. And unfortunately, you can't do that directly with the, uh, the Rod of the Seas. But uh, if we do this, and then we do this, you'll see there's a bucket worth in there. There's a bucket worth in there. But now there's also a bucket in the middle. And so going forward, we should just be able to pull a bucket out of here. And that middle bucket will then regenerate automatically. And so what we should be able to do in now, champ, is if we grab our fluid conduits and do something like this, we want to make sure that these ones here are not connected at all. We want to make sure this one is set to extract, always active. And then over here, we want to set to insert and insert. Nice. And that should, I believe, continually produce water. It doesn't. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if we've pulled water out too fast there. Because now it's kind of hit an equilibrium to where it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm being told by the Twitch chat that this works better as a, as a two by two, which would make some sense. We were given, or we did make four of these. You make them, you know, in batches of four. So maybe if we do something like this, and then we start filling that up with water. At that point, maybe that's going to work all right. Yeah, that seems to be doing a much better job, actually. Yeah, like I said, I think the... One before was working, but maybe we pulled out too much water too fast. And now there's like a bit more, a bit more of a buffer there to refill uh, this tank when it gets uh, gets emptied. We'll do a similar thing, I think, on the other side if we put down uh, more reservoirs uh, but or, or more garden cloches. But this appears to be working just fine. And these two over here by the old fermenter are going to be for sugarcane, right? Let me just check that real quick. I'm fairly certain that uh, it is ethanol that's made in the... Fermenter? It is, yeah. So this one is where we're either going to do sugarcane, apples, potatoes, or watermelon. And I do believe you can do sugarcane in here. Again, there are faster ways to do it. I'm actually not too sure if you can put snad into the um, the garden cloche. Uh, I'm being told snad does not work, unfortunately. I do kind of want to try, although I would be surprised if it does work. Let's have a look. Can I put uh, snad in here? I can put snad in there, but like as to whether or not it works, that's a different question. So uh, that does lead us, chat, onto uh, another thing that I do kind of want to work on today, and that is conduit facades. I want to be able to cover up these uh, holes in the floor generated by our NYO conduits, and we can do that fairly easily with conduit facades. Now, by default, these don't look great, but if we run them through a uh, painting machine, this guy right here, uh, you can make the conduit facades look like any other block in the game. So we could get a conduit facade that covers up, uh, for example, this conduit here and uh, this conduit here that looks just like the mineral planks that we already have. And that should allow us to have a fairly uh, flush looking floor that doesn't have these giant holes in it for, uh, for cables. So let's see, we are going to need some more enhanced energy conduits. That seems fine. Uh, the benefit of the energy conduits um, and also of all of the conduits from NYO is that you can have um, multiple conduits in one block. So as we go past this uh, fluid conduit here, instead of having to go around it like we might have to do with, uh, you know, any glass fiber cable or uh, pipes from uh, extra utilities, anything like that, we can actually just go uh, straight through it and we can have both cables inside one block. And you can do that quite a few times, actually. You can have basically all of the cables, uh, all of the conduits even, 
from NYO inside of, uh, of one block, which is real neat. You can move water or fluids, even energy, you know, applied energy sticks and redstone all within uh, one cable in one block, which is super nice. But uh, for now, though, we do require a few more cables here. I think we do have a little bit of energized ingot, a few energized ingots left. We do indeed. So getting more of the older energy conduits here really shouldn't be too difficult for us. 48 is uh, maybe overkill, but uh, that's fine. You can never have too many energy conduits. And I think here, like I said, I'm going to cover up. I'm going to like cover these cables here with facades before the end of today's stream. So we can quite safely do something a little bit like that. And then just run that cable up to the top like so. Now, what I think we might have to do, chat, temporarily, just to kind of get things going here is I might go and steal one of these energy cells and just put down another wireless RF transmitter. Just to kind of kickstart the uh, the system a bit. Are we really out of wireless uh, RF transmitters? Thankfully, they are surprisingly easy to make. But yeah, for now, if we just do something like this, make sure the left there is set to output and make sure there's one of these down nearby. That should uh, hopefully provide power to these guys. It does. Nice. And as you can see, uh, this one at the very least is growing. Uh, this one over here might be growing. Alas, it would appear that it is not. So unfortunately, the snad, whilst faster, if you place it down, is not faster uh, in the garden cloche there, which is a little uh, disappointing, but that's fine. And uh, so essentially, this is now working. This is going to produce uh, sugar cane, and we're going to pipe that sugar cane out and around and over into the old, uh, the old fermenter here. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing over on the other side. And I guess at this point, we might as well do basically the exact same thing with, uh, with two of these. So I will go and make one more real quick, chat. And boom. And uh, now we are going to do the same thing here as well, of course. We're going to run power up to the top, and we're going to make another uh, set of end of wires to fill in the bottom. But uh, once that's done, we should basically, chat, be there. Now, there are a few things, I guess, that we do need to bear in mind. I think what we could probably do... Hmm, the sugarcane only has one output, and that one output, for us at least, is just going to go... Uh, directly into the fermenter, right? So what we might be able to do then, chat, is maybe put these down sideways. Like this. I'm thinking we can then have our item conduits kind of run down like this along the same wire. And you'll see like right here, we have energy, item, and fluid conduits all in one block, which is very nice indeed. Uh, and then we're going to run that along and then I guess up into here like that. Nice. So we'll just go ahead and make sure these are not set to do anything. We don't want any connections there or there. These ones here are going to be set to extract, always active, and extract, always active. And then this one over here is going to be set to insert, like so. And at that point, if we put the uh, sugarcane and the sand back in, what we should see is we should see the sugarcane growing, which you can. And then as soon as we get a piece of it, we should see it get sent over and be placed into the old uh, fermenter here. It works. Nice. And so that is basically the plan going forward. I am hoping that two garden cloches here is enough to is going to make enough sugarcane uh, to run this. If it doesn't, we could look at uh, we could look at saying more cloches, but we could also look at uh, potentially like hiding a few uh, bonsai pots for sugarcane in like the walls behind here uh, just to make it a bit faster. But uh, I think it's really going to come down to whether or not these garden cloches uh, can produce enough hemp seeds for the uh, the squeezer. So. We're going to do the exact same thing, of course, over here. Uh, but this time, we're going to go ahead and grab the old hemp seeds. Uh, and these ones are a little bit trickier because they output uh, both hemp seeds and hemp. So when you grow the hemp, uh, the product that arrives on uh, the right-hand side is going to be both hemp seeds. So we're going to pump, of course, around and into the squeezer. But then on top of that, where they also produce the, uh, the hemp fiber uh, that we're going to use going forward to make more string. So that is something we are going to have to bear in mind. We are going to have to set up some kind of draw probably with a void upgrade of some description to make sure that the draw doesn't uh, block up the making of more seeds. Now, these ones, I believe, do require dirt instead of sand. 
That is also fine. We do have the uh, the Rod of the Land, so making more dirt not going to be a problem for us. Boom and boom. And at that point, all we're missing is the old uh, the old end of war, which once again uh, really shouldn't be too difficult for us to make here. Nice. And while we're at it, we might as well also make sure we got our, uh, our water on us as well. We could, if we wanted to, I guess, run like the water from here all the way underground and over. But given how cheap the uh, the end of wars here are, it really doesn't seem worth it. One, two, three, four, and then slightly awkwardly, water and water. I assume that's enough to fill them all up. It is indeed fantastic. And again, unfortunately, it looks like we are going to be one <laughs> one fluid conduit shot here. Which is not a huge deal, but it does mean we have to go make another uh, another set of eight. Once again, turn that off. Make sure you're set to extract. Always active. Insert and insert. And there we go. We should now have the uh, industrial hemp seeds and industrial hemp fiber uh, being grown inside of the old garden cloches here. And like I said, the only potential issue now is the two outputs. So I'm kind of thinking, chat. So what I might do is I might put down, hmm, I'm just thinking of where I want to put down the storage drawers here. Because what we could do is we could have like an item conduit here and here, and then we could have like one centralized drawer that has the seeds, and then we could have maybe like one either side that fills up with, uh, with hemp fiber. It's obviously not super like efficient in terms of the number of drawers that we have. It's one more draw than is strictly necessary. But in the terms of symmetry, I think it might work out quite well. Yeah, so Chet has recommended rotating these, much like we did with the, uh, the sugar cane. But this time, I guess what we can do is we can pull everything out like that and then put it all into, uh, into two storage drawers on the front. So I believe we do have some drawers left over. We do indeed. And uh, we do only need two of them for now. So I'll take two down. If we put one... And I kind of want to make new drawers, chat. I might do, honestly, because these drawers kind of don't fit with the uh, the theme down here. You know what? Real quick, in the interest of making the base hopefully look a little nicer, um, what I will do is we'll go and put these back through the old uh, table over here. But this time with the mineral wood, the stone, and the dark oak to hopefully make them look a little bit more like the uh, the area around them downstairs. What do we think, chat? In terms of, uh, of draws here, I don't think I don't think this looks great. I don't know if we can uh, chisel this. No, we can't, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, we could potentially try like changing the the chiseled stone here. We could go with maybe like a a panel stone. We get one to save my chisel a bit. We could do like this, right, and then maybe border blue. Potentially. All right. So once we've uh, colored this the way we want, I think we're gonna do one here. And one here. One of them is going to be for hemp. We might as well make it the one that's farther away. Uh, the other one is going to be, of course, for the old uh, seeds, which I think I have just put away. I did. Uh, let's also make sure that uh, we have seeds in here with dirt and in here once again with dirt and then the other seeds out like that. And so I think what we can do here, chat, is we can set both of these to extract always active. And we can set both of these to insert. But then what we can also do, which is pretty nifty, is that we can set this one to extract on a different color channel. So if we set this one to brown and then always active, what we can then do is we can then put another cable down over here and set this one to insert on brown. So what's going to happen is, and what, what's a, a pretty nifty feature of the item conduits from Android IO is that you can have multiple kind of extract and insert channels through one cable. So because these are both set to green, these are going to extract and insert here and here. But then this one on brown is going to extract and then send that round to the, the brown insert as opposed to uh, the green insert here. So we can do that all within uh, the one cable. We can kind of insert and extract on this one face here, which is super nice. We are going to need a couple more item conduits here, but that really shouldn't be too difficult. I believe we do still have some uh, pulsating iron nuggets left over from uh, the big bulk craft that I made for all of those drawers outside. And at that point, much like we did previously, 
We can then run this down through all of here and then just along and into here. And you'll notice at this point, the room is getting pretty messy, but hopefully what we should be able to do in just a minute here, chat, is get that painting machine up and running and uh, and really get to, uh, to work kind of tidying this all up and making it all look a little bit more uh, presentable. That is working, which is good. So uh, hopefully we're gonna get some uh, some plant oil in here in just a second. At that point, we can hopefully get rid of this guy and this guy, because now what should happen is we should be making biodiesel, which should be getting pumped around into here. Oh, I need to put down my fluid conduit chat. There we go. And yeah, that should be working quite nicely. Like I said, I don't think there's a way to silence um, the machine, the diesel generator. We do have a sound buffalo underneath, but uh, I've been told this does not do anything. I think outside of maybe just... Yeah, that usually seems to work. I don't know what it is. It, it does the same with mechanism as well, but if you turn block sounds off and then back on, it kind of silences certain uh, certain machines. That sound will come back whenever I like leave and rejoin the uh, the world. But for now, it's it's silent, which I guess is fine. And uh, maybe once per per stream, I can just turn the sound off and back on again, and uh, and it'll work. But uh, yeah, this seems to be working. And like I said, it seems like the bottleneck is not going to be ethanol. It's going to be plant oil, right? We're, we're kind of waiting on uh, on the seeds here, which I think are probably coming in just fine. Like I imagine right now. It's hard to tell if the, the, if the generator's on when it, we don't have sound, but it, it looks like it is. I think for now, we're more likely to back up on power before we, uh, you know, before we start running out of resources. Um, one thing I should do, though, chat, is I should lock these drawers. Where is my, my key? Yeah, we should temporarily set this to um, extract active with signal. And so what that's going to allow us to do is hopefully... There we go, get some seeds in, lock that, lock that. Uh, we don't need to lock anything over there because there aren't any. And at that point, we can then turn that back on to always active. And that should be good to go. Nice. So now, chat, let's take a look at the painting machine. So this guy is a little pricey. It is going to use one of our industrial machine chassis, as well as a diamond, which thankfully isn't really too pricey. Um, but we do, however, need to get some more uh, electrical steel, which doesn't seem too bad. It's iron. Pulverized coal and silicon. We are a little low on silicon, but as always, that really shouldn't matter too much. We can run our, our clay here through the old sack mill. Nice. And then if we put in U, U, and then wait for some more pulverized coal. I'm hoping we can get the electrical steel a little quicker now. It's still fairly slow, and it does have me thinking that maybe we should look to getting uh, these octatic capacitors sooner rather than later. They're not too bad. The vibrant alloy here is just an energetic alloy with an ender pearl, and then two of the previous layer capacitor with some glowstone. Um, that would mean that we'd have to start running our power upstairs, which is, of course, what we want to do um, anyway, because as mentioned before, right now, these are kind of using more power than the uh, previous tier of generators could handle. But uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment. For now, we do have the painting machine, which I believe is also going to require a capacitor. And we might as well keep with the uh, the tradition and go ahead and make a double layer one here. Nice. I think for now, I'll put this guy down somewhere. <laughs> you know what? Let's put it down like temporarily. Chat, I'm going to put it down like right here. Not perfect, but it'll work. And then what we can do is if we get some conduit facades, which are just made from conduit binder, which is of course just sand, gravel, and clay, we can then grab, I, I'm gonna make as many of these as I can. And I'm also even gonna go as far to make like even more conduit binder. We are going to need more gravel, but that should be fine. We can put uh, cobblestone into our little mechanical squeezer. Uh, how are we doing on sand? Sand, we're running a little low and then clay we have kind of just used um, a bunch of our clay making uh, making silicon. So we should probably look, chat, at getting a bunch more sand, gravel, and clay because we do need one conduit facade for each conduit that we want to cover up. And uh, we did kind of uncover quite a lot of um, quite a lot of cables there. 
All right, so we'll make a bit more of you once we have some more gravel. And of course, we'll get that all uh, smelting up here. But uh, essentially, the way this works, if we grab, for example, some mineral uh, planks here, what we can do is, uh, first of all, we can cover up all the holes that don't require facades. That's probably the best start we can do there. But then uh, also what we can do is we can put in the mineral planks as kind of the reference block. And then if we put in conduit facades on the right, that's going to create the conduit facades that look like the mineral blocks, at which point uh, we can right click those over certain conduits and boom. Now they're, uh, ni now, now they're nice and flush with the floor, which is, uh, it just looks a lot nicer. Let's have a look. So the Twitch chat is recommending uh, the use of ear defenders, which are from Immersive Engineering, which is also the mod the diesel generators are from. Let's give them a try. So if I take these. Oh, it does work. It like fully silences the machine. Like assuming that is still on, which we can test by doing something like this. Yeah, that's going up. So that totally works. Nice. Okay, so we can wear these little ear defenders here. I guess they're not particularly good as like a piece of armor. But they do work, and they do silence the machine, which is real nice. You can combine them with your armor. Really? You totally can. You can apply the ear mufflers or the ear defenders to your armor. That is incredible. Thank you, chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that's going to make living through those, um, those sounds there significantly easier. So, yeah, I'm thinking over here, chat. What I might do is I might move these down to the floor. I definitely should have... Maybe use some packing tape there. But it's not really a huge deal. This one is basically empty, right? Yeah. And I'm basically thinking at that point that uh, instead of having this cable here, because if we left it where it was, we would have that one cable kind of protruding out. Um, but what I might do instead is just run the cables underneath, right? And connect them to the drawers that way. We can have the exact same setup that we had before, but this time with the cables... It requires one more cable, but uh, I think that's fine. So you want to be insert and then extract on brown, always active. And then you just want to be insert. Nice. So now the uh, hemp fiber and hemp seeds should go out into here, into here. And then the same thing is going to happen. But now they're going in uh, through the bottom. So we can cover that up nice and easily uh, with the old facades. Uh, let's make sure that we do lock uh, not that. That is very much so incorrect. There we go. Lock that. Lock that. And then uh, just cover it all up with facades. Cool. So at that point, chat, uh, we'll get rid of this guy. We'll also move the uh, the painting machine because it doesn't belong down here. Uh, we will... I don't know if I love the generator placement. I might end up moving this. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of awkward, the place that it's... The, like the, the positioning that it currently holds. I might put it in the wall or something. We might build like a little kind of indent that goes back there and maybe move it over there a little bit because I do like to be able to see like the symmetry here and here, but for the most part, uh, this is working just fine. Uh, we are getting uh, hemp seeds. These are temporarily going into the wrong location, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. So yeah, the hemp seeds should be going in there. The sugar cane are going in over here. Whether or not we're producing enough diesel, um, I think right now we're probably not producing enough diesel for continuous use, but uh, we're also not really using that much power right now, so I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, going forward, if we do start to produce uh, or start to use a lot of power, then uh, we're definitely going to run, I think, into uh, into issues of not having enough diesel. Uh, but at that point in time, we could look at making more garden cloches. We could look at putting down, uh, you know, maybe some bonsai pots. We could look at doing a whole host of things to uh, to mitigate that. So, Chan, now that we have all of the uh, diesel power down here uh, taken care of and we have it all tidied up using the old painting machine, let's pivot over to a little bit of applied energistics. I would very much so like to get a wireless crafting terminal. Now, by default, Applied Energistics only has the wireless terminal, which doesn't allow you to craft. This guy is, is quite useful. It allows you to access all of the items that you have in your system, but it doesn't allow you to craft. It just shows a big old screen that has your items in there. However, we do have an add-on mod called Wireless Crafting Terminal 2, which allows us to turn that normal wireless terminal into a wireless crafting terminal that we can then use wirelessly anywhere in the base to essentially give us the same functionality as our ME crafting terminal, but wirelessly. So, to get it, chat, 
I don't think it's going to be too difficult. We do have to get another ME crafting terminal. Although, in reality, we could, if we wanted to, just get rid, like we could use this ME crafting terminal in the making of the wireless crafting terminal, right? That might not be a terrible idea. Now, we do also need a calculation processor. And as you'll know, if you watched the previous streams, the way to get calculation processors is with pure Certus Quartz Crystals. And previously, the way that we got our pure Certus Quartz Crystals was by uh, dropping pure Certus Quartz Seeds into the water and then waiting like 20 minutes for it to actually get turned uh, into a pure Certus Quartz Crystal. Now, we could do that again. However, I think for the sake of my sanity, it's going to make a lot more sense for us to look at finally getting um, the improved version of the uh, Crystal Growth Accelerators. Much like we improved our Inscriber, to make an advanced inscriber, we can improve our crystal growth accelerators into a crystal growth chamber. Now, it does require that we make four more of these crystal growth accelerators, and for that, we are going to need a fair bit of quartz glass, as well as quite a bit of, uh, quite a lot of flux crystals to make these flux blocks. However, I think that should maybe be doable. We might have to go and get some more surges quartz, and it also might not be a terrible idea, chat. For us to look, potentially, in fact, do we have some over here? No, we don't. Um, it might not be a terrible idea, chat, for us to look at uh, potentially setting up a um, an Orchid Ignis, right? The, the nether version of the Orchid, uh, so we can kind of start passively getting some of the um, the nether ores, like the uh, the sort of squats, like the nether quartz, all that kind of stuff, uh, coming in without having to go and mine it manually, especially because the nether is, of course, very much so, uh, like, ungenerated. We'd have to go and generate it if we want to make more, and so... In general, I think it would be nice if we could get those resources coming in automatically so we don't have to manually go to the nether, regenerate a chunk, and then mine that chunk um, for resources. For now, though, I think we might have what it takes. Let's get some nether quartz. Let's get some redstone. Uh, let's temporarily put down a new body of water. Oh, of course, we have... <laughs> so this is our uh, cobblestone generator, I believe, the one that's outside. And I think, actually, this is flowing... Let me check on this real quick. Yeah, so I think, actually, this block here doesn't need to be here this like uh this is just flowing water that's not meant to be there and then that's gonna look horrible from the outside but for now it's fine let's put some water down like that and then let's do uh charge soda quartz redstone and nether quartz once we have the crystal growth chamber chat we can stop with the water pretty much once and for all so uh, right now we have two blocks we do need a total of four blocks there we go and at that point, we might basically be there. Yeah, we might need some more ME cable as well. But uh, for the most part, I think we are onto something. So let's see. How many more of these can we make? That's three. That's four. That's five. And that is six. All right, chat. We've done it. Nice. So much like the advanced inscriber, I'm going to assume that the crystal growth chamber does have to be placed down on the network. And you'll notice that right away, our power situation became a little dire there. But I think it's doing all right. And so what we should be able to do now, chat, is if we want to make more Fluix Crystals, I believe that we can take Charged Soda Squats when it comes through. There we go. Redstone and Nether Quartz and just put them all in here and they get instantly turned into those Fluix Crystals. No longer do we have to deal with this, uh, this puddle of water here. We can get rid of it right away. Beautiful. And then at that point, chat, uh, we should also be able to make a Certus Quartz Seed. Hopefully, we might have to grind down one of our uh, Certus Quartz Crystals here. But uh, if we do this and then take these, now we can put them in here. And you'll see they are growing significantly faster than they were previously. We can even take that one step further. And if we put in these acceleration cards, then it suddenly becomes so much faster. Instead of having to wait 20 minutes, for the Surtus Quartz Seed to grow in water, we can wait maybe less than a minute for it to be grown inside of the old uh, Crystal Growth Accelerator there, which is very nice indeed, and uh, should therefore allow us to make uh, some more of those calculation processes nice and easily. And I think we only need the one for now, but I might as well make two. We can always make more if we uh, if we need it. So there is the, uh, the calculation processor. Let me go ahead and bookmark the old uh, wireless crafting terminal here. What are we missing? So the ME terminal is fairly easy. The only thing we're missing right now is the old formation core, which is very doable. 
like I say, I think we might be heading towards a, uh, a shortage of Surtur Quartz, and we might have to head out to get some in a second. Uh, we do have to make eight energy cells. Yeah, and that's definitely going to be where our lack of Surtur Quartz hits us the hardest. So uh, let me quickly check. Go and uh, do a little bit of Nether Quartz mining, or Surtur Quartz mining in the Nether. So a quick little trip to the Nether chat. We now have a, uh, a stack and a bit of Surtur Quartz, as well as some extra charged Surtur Quartz as well. So hopefully now getting... This energy cell might not be too bad, although I guess we do also, chat, have to get not only 32 Surtus Quartz to make eight of these, but also 32 Fluix Dust, and each Fluix Dust is one Surtus Quartz charged. So we are going to have to get 32 Fluix Dust here. So 26 more uh, than what we actually, we do have a few Fluix Dust already. We got two. So uh, we are going to need, uh, what, 24 charged Surtus Quartz? So let's get 20 more of those going. Once those are done, we can then, of course, make 20 Fluix Crystals, uh, 20 more Fluix Crystals to get us all of the uh, Fluix Dust that we're going to need. At that point, we should then basically have everything that it takes. We are also going to need to get some more Quartz Glass. For that, we're definitely going to use Nether Quartz. And uh, as is tradition, we might as well, first of all, use our Travel Anchor, but uh, duplicate our Nether Quartz in the old Conjures Catalyst. We do want to uh, kind of keep on top of it a little bit because otherwise it is going to get turned into a... Uh, mana quartz over in the other mana pools which is not what we want all right so we'll take those and we'll of course do charge status quartz nether quartz and redstone thankfully we do have quite a bit of redstone now due to the fact that we've been getting uh, kind of coming in passively from our orchid over there which is very nice indeed um, but we currently have eight so that means we need 24 more there we go Hopefully that won't take too long. And then at that point, chat, we should basically be good to go. We still do have a stack of Surtis Quartz, so that is fine. Um, we can make one of those, I guess, a Fluix Pearl. Do we need two Fluix Pearls? Yeah, because we need to turn one of them into the, uh, the old wireless receiver here. That's fine. And then we'll craft up one more of those to make the old actual Fluix Pearl. We did use eight Fluix Dust there, so one uh, we'll throw all eight of those in, I guess. That should get us back up to 32, at which point... We should then finally, chat, be able to craft up eight of these uh, energy cells. Uh, of course, we do maybe have to get more glass first. Yeah, that uh, makes a lot of sense. But uh, really, eight should be more than enough. And then at that point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. From there, we should then be able to finally make the dense energy cell and finally craft up the wireless terminal now as mentioned we could just use this but i think we do want to take it one step further if we can and uh, upgrade to the wireless crafting terminal now in order for this to work you need a few things you do need a wireless access point that being this guy right here which does require another calculation processor uh, thankfully the only thing that we're missing in terms of actually getting another uh, calculation processor is a little bit of silicon at that point we can do something like that and that gets us the other processor Nice and quickly. Beautiful. And so that really shouldn't be too difficult. We do need another Fluix Pearl, which uh, could be an issue. Although I guess really all it means is that we have to get more Fluix Crystals. Beautiful. So boom. And boom. And boom. Nice. And this just needs to go down somewhere... On the network anywhere on the network is fine um we also i believe do need a security terminal this allows you to actually uh, connect your wireless terminal to the network so it requires an emmy chest which requires yet one more uh, emmy terminal there so we are going to have to make a yet another annihilation call which again really isn't too bad let me get um, a decent number of uh, charged set of spots going here so we can make a few more uh, fluix crystals Perfect. So Annihilation Core into another ME terminal into chest. Yeah, we're missing some cable now. That is fine. Let's take you. And once again, we need so much, or so many, I should say, Fluix Crystals. We should hopefully still have some Quartz Fiber left. We do indeed. Good stuff, good stuff. ME chest is done. And then at that point, all we're missing is we're missing a engineer's processor, which is by far the easiest part of, uh, of what is still left to do. 
Uh, we do still have 28 diamonds, which is very nice indeed. I was kind of hoping we'd have a few more uh, now that we've been, uh, you know, running that orchid for so long. But 28 is still more than enough for now. And then I think we're going to do quite a few logic processes if we're going to make the 16K ME storage component because it requires three 4K ME storage components, which are made each with three 1K ME storage components. And so in total, I think we're going to need, what, 12? Yeah, we need three of these, and then each one needs three of these. Also, I guess nine. Yeah, nine logic processes plus like four calculation processes. That seems pretty doable. All right, boom, boom, and boom. And once those are done, chat, I think we are basically there on the old uh, security terminal here. We need glowstone, we need quartz glass, and we need redstone. We also actually need a fair bit of uh, Soda's quartz. I'm hoping we have enough. I don't know if 22 is going to be enough, chat. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we should definitely go and duplicate some of our glowstone. Thankfully, we can do this in the same way uh, that we've been duplicating our nether quartz and also our redstone as well, which is very nice. It means we don't have to go through to the nether and try and find uh, even more. Good stuff. All right, let's give this a go, shall we? So we need nine of these. Yeah, we're, we don't have 36 nether quartz, chat. I'm going to be real. <laughs> uh, let's do three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're a little light. We are going to have to go and get some more Certus Quartz. But not too much, right? We need, what, four more of those? So we need, like, 16 more Certus Quartz. We're very close, chat. We're very close. So a little bit of Certus Quartz later. Six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. That should allow us to make three of these. One, did I not make enough, uh, oh, no, I did the right here, chat. I was going to say, I thought I definitely made enough of those. Oh, we need more glass, I see. Also very doable. Two, three. And then, boom. Nice. All right, chat. I think, finally, we have the security terminal. Nice. And again, for now, I'll put it down, like, right here. It just has to be somewhere on the network. And you'll see if we open it, there is a slot in the top right for the crafting grid. So I think what I am going to do, chat, in the name of laziness, is I'm going to steal this wireless, uh, the, the Emmy crafting terminal, and I'm going to craft that up with the wireless terminal and the old Fluix pearl here to get the wireless crafting terminal, which we can then link over in here, like so. Now, uh, we do have to provide this with power. Like, we have to charge this. And I don't know if we... Ca can I charge it in here? No. Oh, no, you totally can. Does that work? That totally works. I had no idea you could charge it in there. Uh, but now if we right click, we can access all of our stuff basically anywhere in the world, which is, uh, which is super nice. And even nicer than that, uh, you can also stick it in a, uh, a bobble slot. And I think, chat, it's finally time to... Uh, replace the tiny uh, tiny potatoes mask. Uh, the benefit of having it in the bubble slot is, of course, you don't have to have it in your inventory. Uh, but, but if we go to options, controls, and we, uh, first of all, I guess, maybe lower our GUI scale so I can actually see what's going on for a second. And we'll go options, controls, we'll type in wireless. And then uh, this by default is set to none. I quite like it set to Z. Let me check what uh, other key is currently set to Z. I'm going to turn these off. But now if I press Z while out and about, and <laughs> if I turn my GUI scale back up again, um, basically, so long as I'm close enough to the wireless access point, I can access all of my stuff on the go. And we can craft as well. Now, uh, people have recommended using the uh, Infinity Booster card here that we do have quite a few of. Uh, you can stick this, I believe, um, into the old uh, access point. And as it says here, it says place up to uh, 2.14 billion of these into your Infinity Booster card slot of a wireless crafting terminal to add to the amount of Infinity Energy of Infinity Energy stored. Infinity Energy allows want to use their wireless crafting terminal beyond the range limits of a WEP and across dimensions. Okay, so apparently the way the Infinity Booster cards work is you uh, stick them in and then they do allow you to access the uh, the system basically from wherever you want, but they do get used up if you're not in range of your wireless access point. So this number here, this Infinity Energy, is currently a 1135 um, and our current wireless access point has a range of 16 meters. So if we try and use this um, 
crafting terminal more than 60 meters away, you'll see the energy being used here. And it's used quite fast as well. So I think what we want to do is we, we can save that and we can use the energy whilst we're like over in the nether, right? Oh, hello, my friend, you're floating. Um, but we can use the, uh, the the infinity energy for when we're like in the nether or in another dimension or too far away from our base uh, to still access it. While we're close though, what we want to do is we want to make some um, range boosters. These guys are here, the wireless boosters, which are made with uh, Cetus Quartz, Fluix Dust, Ender Dust, which is just Ender Pearls, I believe, and, uh, and then Iron Ingots. I'm hoping we can make some of this Ender Dust in the Sag Mill. Although maybe not. Maybe we do have to do it in uh, a different machine. There are two kinds. There's the one from Ender I.O. and there is the one from Tech Reborn. Unfortunately, it looks like neither of those can be made in the Sag Mill. Can I turn that into the right stuff? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we can you can take an ender pearl, sag mill it, and then craft it to get what you're after. And thankfully, we do have a ton of ender pearls. So that really shouldn't be too difficult for us. Nice. And each one of these does increase the power usage. You'll see right now it's using 8 AE per tick. If we put one in, it goes to 9. And I believe it is uh, kind of exponential. So the more of these you put in, uh, like the first one only increased the range by 1 meter, but then the second one uh, increased the range by 1.8 meters. Uh, if we were to make, you know, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, if we were to keep making uh, more and more and more of them, I'm fairly certain that the range would get uh, kind of exponentially farther. But also, I believe it does also kind of exponentially increase the amount of power that's used as well. Yeah, so you'll see we're going up quite quick, but now we've almost doubled the amount of power. Um, I'm not quite sure what the conversion rate is, by the way, between AE and uh, RF, although I guess we can change it here. So we're using 30 RF per tick there. Um, again, it's not really an issue. What we should be able to do, uh, basically, is uh, go ahead and run energy conduits from here up kind of to that energy cell there to provide power to our, uh, to our base. It is going to mean, though, that we have to kind of run energy conduits up through the wall. And that does mean we're going to have to get our old friend the painting machine back out as well. So uh, let's see, actually. what What's our current range like? Because really, at the moment, we only need the wireless access terminal to be able to go as far as... This is too far, eh? I think I do want to, to push it a little further. I think I want to be able to access, you know, my system without using my infinity booster card points anywhere in the base. So, like, all the way back there, which I think is probably closer to, like, 50 blocks away. So I think I do want to get at least a couple more of the old uh, range boosters here, if we, can, uh, if we can swing it. We are running a little low on iron, and we still actually yet to, uh, to start processing our iron automatically, but that is definitely something that's on my list of, uh, of things to do, chat. All right, let's see. I don't think we're going to need six more. So 34, 38, 43, I think 52 meters, and then 50 hours per tick is probably fine. Oh, we could probably bump it one more as well. So 57 there. I think that should give us, chat, basically uh, the ability to access our system over here without having to uh, to resort to using our infinity boosters. Let's see. Yeah, so we're not using our infinity energy here. So we're within 57 blocks, which is nice. Uh, and so that should give us the ability to use our, to access our system basically wherever we are. So no longer uh, do we have to teleport back to the, uh, the center room here. In fact, we will probably... Uh, maybe like move this uh, travel anchor now, although I guess we do still want to be able to come here for the uh, the machines and whatnot uh, going forward. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and uh, drop a purple -pur block right about here. I might uh, eventually like put down another crafting terminal here just to, uh, to have it there uh, in case my wireless terminal does run dry. But yeah, I think chat, that's where I'm going to wrap up the um, levitated portion of today's stream. Uh, we do still have, of course, progress to be made. Um, I think we'll look next time at getting... Uh, another star should be super easy. In fact, we could maybe make another star right now. I think it might need a, uh, an overworld matter. Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, look at that. Boom. Quest complete. <laughs> so the nether star, thankfully, is, uh, is pretty easy uh, to make, and that is a quest that, we have, uh, that we've done. Um, I think we can do the heat overload quest to craft an induction smelter, um, and a few of these other quests probably fairly easily. Nether star generator is required. Like I mentioned before, if we're going to get the rainbow generator, we do need kind of two of every generator. 
The first one of every generator is used to make the rainbow generator, and the second one of every generator is used to actually activate the rainbow generator to get these uh, these rainbow ingots. Uh, what's this quest here? Reversing reality. Remember those elves? They said they are willing to give you some more information about the overworld if you have some of an uh, of an artifact that they are interested in. Clearly, you have none. But this fake artifact that you forged with a nether star might just do the trick. Craft an overworld star. So this one, I believe, is a little uh, pricey. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, honestly. Like, we have the nether star. Elementium we can get. Terra Steel we can get. Manulin we can get. We've made all those before. Infused iron ingots are iron and uh, nether stars in the en uh, in enchanter. And uh, we do need to get the enchanter if we're going to make speed upgrades for our... Uh, for our extra utilities machines, like these enhanced ingots here, uh, can be used to make the uh, the upgrade, uh, the speed upgrades going forward. So we are gonna have to get one of those eventually, anyway. Uh, Signalum and Lumium are required to make the excavation modifier, so we're gonna get those as well fairly soon. The demon ingots, I don't think are too hard. Um, I believe we have to get uh, just nether brick and like a flint and steel or something to uh, to make this to work. You like throw an iron ingot or a gold ingot at like a, a lava block of nether brick. Well, we'll do that in the future, but I really don't think that's too hard to get. And then hop graphite is made from hop graphite dust, which is made um, in the squeezer with coke dust, which you get by uh, breaking down cold coke. Unfortunately, it does have to be done in the crusher, so we are going to have to set that up, uh, even though we're not probably going to use the crusher too much. But uh, either way, that doesn't look too difficult. So I don't think getting the overworld star is really going to be too uh, too difficult there. Like I said, I really think orb of life, eh? Orb of life. I really think... Oh, this seems fine, actually. Yeah, the overworld star in the old uh, Elven portal gets us that. That's easy enough. The hardest part is just be getting all the generators and then the really hard part is going to be automating it so that all of the generators can run at the same time and thus we can start to get the rainbow the rainbow ingots. That's going to be interesting. Um, but for now, guys, like I said, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to end the levitated portion of today's stream there.